to kickstart it, this very, very interesting book. Why did you decide to write And the Good News Is? Oh, um, I'll start off by saying, is this on? Yeah. Does it work? Yeah, take this one. Yeah. I'll it take it. It works. I got to turn it on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Usually someone does that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, thanks for being here tonight. Um, and we originally didn't have a New York event on the schedule. Um, I think that's because the book has surprised everybody. Um, and when I when it started coming out, they said we have to have a New York event, and this is the only one I really wanted to do. Um, I got to come here with Greg Gutfeld a couple of times. As an audience member and an interested person, and I think Hudson Society does amazing work, so thanks for being here, and we'll try to make this entertaining for you. Um, the reason I wrote the book, twofold, mainly um, I had this crazy career that happened to me that was not planned. Um, and I get, because of that, I, ha I get asked a lot, especially by younger people and, or their parents who care about their futures, how, c you know, how can I become White House Press Secretary or achieve big things? And they want to know where I came from. And I had a lot of advice to give at the end of the administration. I started a group called Minute Mentoring, which was like speed dating but mentoring for young women. And then I realized it really wasn't gender specific. A lot of the advice I had wasn't gender specific. And I liked a lot of it and I figured I could package it into one place because the supply and demand in terms of the amount of desired uh, advice and amount of time I could give, I needed just to put it all in one place. And the other reason I wanted to write it is um, there's only one person who could write this book about George W. Bush. I was the first Republican woman to be press secretary of the United States. And historians are going to be writing about the policies and uh, decisions, the, pol the pol politics of George W. Bush for the rest of time. As 43 used to tell me, um, in one year, in 2008, he read three biographies of George Washington. And if the historians were still writing books about the first president, then the 43rd didn't have a lot to worry about because he would never know how it would turn out. So he tried to get me not to worry about it, but I did feel like history was missing something. And it was, who is George W. Bush as a boss, a commander in chief, and really somebody who became like a second father to me. And what I would do in speeches would explain his leadership style and his personality through stories of things that I saw behind the scenes. I never, I don't recount stories that people saw on television. You all know those, you've seen those. I, I took people behind the scenes in this book and put it together into something that I called, and the good news is, and the reason I chose the title is I grew up sort of an optimistic person. Um, are you recording this? Cool. Okay. <laughs> I think it'd be easier if we don't, because that's a little awkward. Um, I'm an optimistic person, so I grew up on a ranch, and you kind of have to be, right? My grandparents had that outlook that you have to tr sort of trust that um, nature and God is going to make next year's harvest and next year's cattle um, come in, come through for you. Um, and also, we just had this great, amazing upbringing out in the West. Uh, but the re other reason is when I first got my job on Capitol Hill. I was a new press secretary, I didn't know anything. I didn't even know the difference between a megawatt and a megaphone, that's how I used to describe it. And I got um, some advice from my chief of staff, and she said, she was sending me in to go talk to the congressman about something, and you know, when you go see the boss, it's not because something's good. You, you usually have to go in and have to deliver bad news. So she, her advice to me was, if you're gonna do work in press, then you always have to know that you go in with the bad news, and you follow it up with good news. So you have, you have to have something so that you leave on a high note and that, so that they'll want to see you again. <laughs> um, and so I realized that that's actually just a phrase that I would use all the time because there's no secret in the Bush administration that like, pretty much it was bad news a lot of the time. So I would go in and I would say, well, sir, um, the New York Times is going to totally trash you in the morning, but uh, I've got a plan. So the good news is we are on top of it, or whatever it was that I could squeeze out of it. 